Question, is Jesus Christ the only way to heaven? And the answer to that question is absolutely yes. And that's what I'll be uh, taking a look at here today. Ladies and gentlemen, whoever you are, you might have tuned in, you like the title. Uh, it piqued your interest perhaps and perhaps you don't know the Lord and you want to you wanna make sure when you die, you want to make sure you're going to end up in heaven. Uh, you're not sure really what to believe. Uh, you know, there are so many teachings out there. Well, I'm going to uh, prove to you today through the scriptures that Jesus Christ is, in fact, the only way to heaven. We're living in a day where, you know, a lot of people like to dialogue with people of other faiths and religions, and it sounds very cozy. It sounds very loving, but, you know, many people don't realize that uh, people get seduced and snared uh, by such things, and... Um, they think, basically, it sometimes can give off the impression that, you know, we, we, we may have minor differences, but all roads lead to heaven. I've heard this many times over the years. So I want to settle the issue uh, today with this teaching. Once again, the question, is Jesus Christ the only way to heaven? You know, what did Jesus say about himself? Listen to this, John 14 and 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So that's a very well-known verse of Scripture. And uh, very clearly, the Lord makes it uh, clear to all of us. He's the way, he's the truth, he's the life, and no man... Jesus said, we'll come to the Father unless they come uh, through him. So uh, let me give you a couple uh, of other verses just to back up what was said there. Uh, Matthew 7 and 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Next verse, Matthew ten thirty two and 33. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. So I, I gave those verses for a reason because both of those verses make it clear that the Father is in heaven. And if you look at John 14 and 6, once again, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the Father is in heaven. And you want to go to heaven, you're going to have to come through Jesus Christ, or you will not be there. Don't ever forget that. You will not be in heaven unless you come through Jesus Christ. You know, many people of, of different faiths, they even have a, a belief uh, about uh, Jesus, such as the Muslims, but they do not believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. They believe him to be nothing more than a prophet. The Muslims, uh, you must know this, folks, the, the people of Islam, the Muslims, they do not even believe that uh, God has a son. So my, oh my, that, that severs your relationship with that group of people immediately. So don't fall for this type of uh, thing you see going on in the world today with these uh, ecumenical type of dialogue meetings. Don't buy it, folks. You're hearing the truth here. Once again, from the Soul Refuge uh, website here, my name is W.F. White, former Roman Catholic, by the way. Let's take a look at John chapter 1, verses 40 to 42. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. So right there, you know, it's a very clear verse in the scriptures which show us that Jesus Christ was recognized very early on to be the Messiah. All right, so uh, there's not a different plan of salvation for the Jewish people and the Gentile people. It's right here, folks. Jesus Christ, he's the Messiah. And the majority of Jewish people then 
and now reject him. They don't believe the Messiah came. So once again, uh, a warning shouted by me to you today. Don't fall for this dialogue that everything's okay. We just have minor differences. If you do not believe in Jesus Christ before you die, you will die in your sins. That's a, that's a fact. That's what Jesus said even to his own people. You can see that in John 8 and 24. Let's look in Matthew 16, verses 13 to 17. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias or Elijah, others uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, or the Messiah, the Son of of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Glory to God. So we, we see that Jesus is the Messiah. He's the Son of God. And uh, that's what he got across right there. There's another time that the Lord identified himself as the Messiah to a Gentile woman. We'll find that in the book of John, chapter 4, verses 21 to 26. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worship is shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah, so Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Glory to God once again. So here we have the Lord once again. He reveals himself uh, to this woman uh, as the Messiah. Now, if you read that whole uh, story, you, you, know, you can go to John chapter 4, and you'll be able to find that, that this woman was married five times uh, before, and she was living with a man. And yet here is the Lord re revealing himself as the Messiah to this Gentile woman. A Samaritan. Uh, in fact, when she first started to uh, converse with Jesus, she she was very perplexed as to why he was even speaking to her because they didn't get along. The Jewish people and the Samaritans, uh, they despised each other. So uh, very interesting. But here the Lord reveals himself to that woman as the Messiah. Keep that in mind. As you know, that most of the Jewish people in that time did not uh, believe in Jesus Christ. They absolutely refused to believe that he was the Son of God, did not believe he was the Messiah, did not believe that he was Lord. So here we have a beautiful picture how the Lord revealed himself uh, as Messiah to uh, that woman. Keep in mind also that the Lord made it clear to that woman uh, that God is a spirit. He must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. You cannot worship God without the Holy Spirit. I want to make that clear to you. Uh, folks, you cannot. You need the Holy Spirit. You must be born again. Uh, there's a blindness. There's a spiritual veil that hangs over your heart, over your mind. Without the Spirit of God, folks, uh, much of what I'm speaking to you today, you probably won't even understand. You know, m many people uh, will say, "How do? You, who do you? Who are you to say these things? How do you know your way's the only way? Nobody's seen uh, God, and all of this uh, silly talk. It's because they've never been saved. They've never been born again. So um, I want you to know that God must be worshipped in spirit and truth. In fact, He even told the woman. Uh, that the earthly city of Jerusalem did not matter because it was worshiping God in spirit and in truth. So uh, Jesus knew all about this woman's sinful lifestyle, uh, and yet he still revealed himself to that woman as the Messiah. She went back to her town. She told everyone else, and they came back. Listen to this, John 4, 39. 
uh, to 42. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans would come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Glory to God. Uh, they found it out for themselves. They wanted to converse with Christ, and they did. And he taught them, and they said, we know without a shadow of a doubt, this is indeed the Christ. This is the Messiah. This is the Savior of the world. So so uh, I hope you're getting it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you, if you want to go to heaven, if you want to be in heaven before you die, you must make that connection. You must be born again. You must be saved. You must recognize that Jesus Christ paid the price for your sins upon the cross. So this beautiful picture here, here's this woman, the Samaritan woman uh, got saved. The Lord is able to save anybody in the whole wide world, Jewish or Gentile. Uh, the, the Lord knew all about this woman's past, but he still offered her mercy. And what happened, the woman became an instant evangelist for Jesus Christ. And uh, other Samaritans testified. They got saved. So uh, we see here, folks, Jesus the Messiah was saving Gentiles even before he went to uh, the cross. So there's no other Savior, ladies and gentlemen. You remember back all the way uh, in Luke chapter 2, verse 11. Remember when uh, uh, Christ came into the world. It says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Glory to God. So we, we see here the mercy of God. Remember the Apostle Paul when he got saved? Listen to what he said uh, in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So remember, the Apostle Paul was Jewish. So this gospel, ladies and gentlemen, is for Jew and Gentile. So if you're Jewish, you're listening, my word for you today is uh, you need Christ. There's no salvation outside of Jesus Christ. You may be religious, you may read uh, your Hebrew uh, scriptures, but until you come to Christ, until you uh, recognize that uh, outside of him you're a wretch, just like every one of us, uh, uh, obviously, you, you can't be saved. Impossible. The word for the Muslim, the people of Islam, you must repent and believe the gospel like everybody else. <laughs> uh, if you're Hindu, same thing. Uh, Buddhist, same thing. There's one way, and it's through Jesus Christ. Not any other way, but through Jesus Christ. You're hearing the truth here once again. Uh, let's take a look at Titus chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. So, so you see the word Savior being used in relation to Jesus Christ? Why? Because he is the Savior. There is no other Savior. Uh, you, you're not going to seek a Savior until you uh, recognize, first of all, you need to be saved. All right? You're not going to say, I need a Savior, if you don't think you need to be saved. So I'm here to tell you today, that you fall short of the glory of God, that the wages of sin is death, that in and of yourself you are not righteous, you need a Savior. I'm pointing you to the only one who is Jesus Christ. If you go back to the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 11, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Don't miss this, folks. Who said that? Who, who spoke those words? The same Christ that I believe in today spoke those words. This is all the way back in the book of Isaiah. You, yeah, you must understand, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ is eternal. So before he was manifest in the flesh in this world, this was him talking. I even, I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. 
Isn't it beautiful, folks? This is this is true uh, Christianity. This is what we're talking about here. I serve Christ, the Eternal One. Glory to God. Isaiah chapter forty-five, verse twenty-one. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior, there is none beside me. I mean, could it be any clearer? You are hearing the word of God from the Savior himself. He says there is none beside him. So, so you know, if you're, if you're still in that wishy-washy state of mind, ladies and gentlemen, uh, where, where, where you're still thinking that all roads lead to heaven, uh, this is the word that will judge you in that day. It's the word of God. You're hearing it today. So the word is to get in before it's too late. We see that same type of preaching going on in the New Testament. Look at this. Listen to what Peter spoke here. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. I mean, it couldn't be any clearer. There is no other way except through Jesus Christ. You know, um, considering the fact that all people in this world, all the people on planet Earth have sinned and come short of the glory of God, you know, read the book of Romans, and, and there, there are none righteous. There can be no other way for anyone to be saved apart from the Savior and what he's provided uh, for us, ladies and gentlemen, it's nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 8, 9, once again, but God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So we've made it clear. I've proven through the scriptures that there's only one Messiah. There's one Savior. There's one Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way uh, to come in, ladies and gentlemen, except through him. Listen to what Jesus said. This was before he went to the cross. He said, John three sixteen to 18, For God so loved the world... That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Who spoke those words? Jesus Christ himself spoke those words. And he made it clear, if, if, you, if you're a believer, if you believe in him, you have everlasting life. But if you don't believe in him, what did he say? He said, you're condemned already. I mean, the wrath of God is upon you, ladies and gentlemen. You're already condemned. You may believe that you're a good person, but not according to him. He's the one who's going to judge us, folks. Okay, so... You're condemned already. People can rant and scream. and It means nothing. You're condemned already. That's the only thing that matters. He's the one that said you're condemned already, not me. I'm just relating what he's saying. This is the scripture. This is the word of God. Here's what Jesus said after he was killed, after he was butchered on the cross, and he got up from the dead, even as he said he would. Mark 16, verses 14 to 16. After what he appeared unto the eleven, as they sat at meat or food, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature or person, cre creation, that's what he's talking about. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. That should put the fear of God into any man and any woman. I mean, come on here. Look, look what he says. If you don't believe, you will be damned. Right from the creator of all things, you will be damned. 
Folks, you should be jumping for joy that you're still alive and that you can still repent and believe the gospel. That you didn't die in your sins. And that's how I felt when I got saved. You should jump for joy that you could trust Christ, that he will redeem you and wash your sins away. Okay, so he says you can be saved. He says, but if you don't believe, you will be damned. Damnation. Talking about eternity in hell. Oh, folks, I don't, I'm not telling you a Christless eternity, although it is that. I'm telling you, you, you will go to hell. <laughs> you will go to hell. Lord, have mercy. Uh, look at Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. Jesus told that story. It's a place of torment. Oh, yes, it is. It's a place of torment. And um, so I'm going to bring it there as I, as I close this, folks. Keep in mind a quick summary. Jesus declared he was the only way to the Father, John 14 and 6. The Father is in heaven, Matthew 7, 21, 10, 32 to 33. The disciples, they found the Messiah, John 1, 41 and 42. Peter recognized Jesus to be the Messiah, Matthew 16, 13 and 17. Jesus revealed himself as the Messiah to a Gentile woman who was married five times, by the way, and was shacking up with a guy, John 4, 21 to 26. The, the Samaritans recognized Christ as the Messiah and also as Savior, John 4, 39 to 42. Titus told us that God was the Savior, Titus 1 and 3. Titus told us that Jesus Christ was the Savior, Titus 1 and 4. Isaiah declared that there were, there's only one Savior, Isaiah 43, 11, 45, and 21. There is none other name to be saved but by that of Jesus Christ, Acts 4, 10 to 12. The blood of Jesus Christ was shed for you, Romans 5, 8, and 9. Believers in Jesus Christ are not condemned, John 3, 16 to 18. Those who do not believe in Jesus Christ are condemned already, John 3, 16 to 18. Salvation in Jesus Christ or damnation outside of Jesus Christ, Mark 16, verses 14 to 16. Folks, get in while you can, while there's still breath in your body. Remember, the breath you breathe is on loan to you, but it's your choice. Be blessed.